Hello everyone, hey, we folks. are coming to you live on top of the roof at church and these guys have been working with Rick. Um, how long? How long has, has it taken you? Uh, we've been here since about 3.30. Since about 3.30 and show them what you've been doing. Filter change outs. They've been changing out filters and how many does these air conditioners, I mean, I don't even know how many air conditioners we have up here. You said 90 something. 90. No, no, no. No, 90 filters yeah. that they've had to change out. So we want to get some good out of this. The name of our devotion is called The Filter. And look, Alex, you have to look the guy. Okay, I want to show you something. This one's so black that it's gotten hard. Isn't that what you said, Alex? Yeah, okay, show me another dirty one. Oh, one? This one. Okay, here we go. Man, this has got some added stuff to it. I mean, they are ready. We're, You know, our church is sitting by a field, so when they begin to plow, they get extra dirty. We've got to get some attention to them at least, what, once or twice a year? I'm not even, I'm not at sure. once a year. Once a year, okay. Yeah. So um, a filter is something that it has to happen. What if these air conditioners didn't have a filter? Well, you just get dirty air all the time. Dirty air all the time. So let's, let's go into the, our devotion. It's called The Filter. It's a device that removes, blocks, and separates and eliminates impurities from passing through. And you know what? When we gave our life to the Lord, now you can come closer, Alex, so we can see you. He's got some good things to say. When we give our life to, when we have given our life to the Lord, um, we have a filter system that God has provided for us. It's our very own. And first, I want to talk about physically. You guys know what is our, what is our own personal fil filtration system in our body. Oh, thank you. Your kid. Those hairs will filter hairs. out the air. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's, grow. that's why I've been. That's why I got mine. I keep them around because I want to give you clean air. That's yeah. the excuse. Okay. Explain. Yeah. Your, your blood. The gallbladder. I mean, yeah. there's a lot, but the main one is, like you said, the kidney. Um, and I'm just going to tell you guys something. My mom has three kidneys. She has three kidneys, and my dad um, had the. Uh, is it a reader? So am I saying that right? The tube that went to one. He had the extra tube. She had the extra kidney. Um, but anyway, that was it's a strong filtration system. So let's talk about our spiritual life. You know, every day there's stuff that tries to come in to our filter. And so um, then tell me, guys, if there's someone that lacks a filter, <laughs> what is that? Then the guy, what is that? Sometimes you get a little potty mouth. You get a potty <laughs> mouth. And what else, Alex? Well, you're just saying things that can cut people down. Yeah. Sometimes you say things that you wouldn't say if you had more time to think about it. If it would have gotten caught in the filter, you wouldn't have said it. Yeah. <laughs> That's you can tear people down. <laughs> That's right. Oftentimes we can be rude or condescending, vulgar, or just downright mean. And that's when we are not, um, we, we lack a filter. And guys, tell me when, especially you, Alex, you've uh, been a Christian for a few months now. I mean, made that... Um, did I, I said Alex and I looked at you. It's, uh, it's, the, it's the acid he's spraying on these. <laughs> we got to blame something, right? <laughs> Santana. Okay, so did you notice a difference when you gave your life to the Lord? Absolutely. Yeah. What, what happened? I mean, you weren't just free to just say anything, right? Well, beforehand, you know, I never thought about anything. It just splatted out, you know, like Alex was saying, you know. Now, it's like something's buffering things before it comes out of my mouth now. Uh, you take a minute and, and you think about it. Well, yeah. Beforehand, you just never did. Well, Isn't I never that, did. Is that something? So there's some things that can pass through us. If we're not careful, we can get it into our spirit. Alex, tell me about it. Well, I, I think also as a Christian, you have to watch you know, what comes out, right? What your mind says, but also what comes in. What are you taking in? Are you being active? Are you, are you taking measures to insulate yourself from, from temptation and from, from different sin? You know, like, are you watching a bunch of stuff that you're not supposed to watch? Are you listening mm. to stuff? Or are you, you know, if you're on social media and that gets you amped up or watching those types of things that will make you lose your filter, you got to be careful about that as well. So sometimes it's, yeah. it's the things on the outside but coming out, but sometimes the things coming in as well. That is so good. And then our filter can look like this. And it's got to be changed. And so, like you were saying, Alex, it's sin. It's, it's fear. It's worry. It's jealousy. It's envy. It's bitterness. Even as Christians, if we don't keep that filter changed, and we know it's every day that keeps it keeps us in check. Colossians 3, 7 through 9 says, You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of the anger, rage, 
malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped it off your own sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. So he's saying you've stripped it off. Like they've done, I mean, they've been here for a while stripping off these filters. And then we've got to put on the new man, right? And the new filter. Right. So Ephesians 4, 21 through 24 says, since, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off the old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is co uh, corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. And and I'm, I'm telling you that when that happens, have you ever just... I mean, Alex, tell me about your day. Like, have you gone, maybe it's in your job or, you know, you've been around some negativity and you feel like, man, I, I've got to get some, i got to take this off right now. I can't let this negative residue get in me. Tell yeah, me about sure. It. I mean, like, when, you, when you're around that stuff and you expose yourself to it, like this one in particular, you can see where sometimes it builds up just a little bit. You let a little extra stuff get, you know, build up on, in your life. You let a little too much in. It starts to build this hardness and you don't even realize how far you've gone. You actually like for me I remember I, I lost like a sensitivity to like stuff on TV I didn't realize how wow. like violent some of this stuff was or how like how vulgar it was and then if you go a long time without watching it, then you go back to see it and like oh now I, this makes sense I remember what this once was and so like this wow. filter if you let that stuff build up on you over and over and keep exposing yourself to it eventually it's gonna harden you up and you're gonna think like what was what's, you're gonna you lose your ability to determine like hey this is bad for me I should just you know flee from it get around from it as well so that's it's, really it's good really well, we can become desensitized, right? right? Yeah. And it's like, even like if you're around uh, filthy language all day and you're, you know, you can't escape it because you work there, you have to be able to guard yourself, don't you? Absolutely. Guard your heart, your mind, um, and just get to speak live. I mean, I'm saying if you're in a position where you can't get away from it because you can't let it pass through you. Um, David said in Psalms 51 and 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And so he had messed, David had messed up in scripture, like we've all messed up in our lives, and he needed a new filter. And so when, I, when he says a right spirit, that means to make preparation to fix it, like, they, like these filters have been fixed and fashioned um, to frame, to be fitted. Where's that clean one? There you go. See the, <laughs> See the difference? And to be fitted, you know, to fasten down these and you guys, just a while ago, there was a, a box that was the wrong size. Tell me about that, Santana. Oh, so I, 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 we were, oh you. We have yeah. one unit that's a different size than the rest of them. Oh. So we, you know, when they asked me what the number was, I gave them the wrong number, assuming it was the same as the rest of them. But we got a bunch of different air filter types up here. Let's keep it interesting. But, you know, it's that one that, that's different than the others. And one of the things that stood out to me while we were doing this, because, you know, we knew what the broadcast was coming up, it's like, this is so dirty. Like, it would have built up on you. You don't realize, sometimes it's not until you see something else that's clear that wow. you realize how dirty this is. So like earlier, when we were pulling out some of these first filters, we didn't realize even how dirty they were until we started to put the new filters in. And so sometimes, like at least for me, being around Christians or other believers, sometimes good. it's a good influence because it lets you know, it's like, oh yeah, this is... Sometimes if you, you are desensitized, being around people that are more sensitive to those things helps you realize, like, hey, this is a problem I need to address. Wow. And it just, once again, it reminds us, wait a minute, God, and what do we do? How do you get that clean filter? How do we just put off that stuff? You know, sometimes you got to do this. you got to do something physically, you know, to remind you, I'm sure shaking this off. I'm not letting this get in my spirit, you know, or, or offenses that can come. You know, you don't let it don't let it get past you. And that's the wonderful thing about how God designed us in, in this walk with him. Um, and so I want Rick to come up. Hey, babe. Now, last year he did all this, I think, by himself. He's a working machine, I want you to know. And so these guys chose to help him. And I love, uh, he's now, I'm telling you, uh, he's also been known as the rooftop preacher because we, <laughs> since COVID, we've done some outside services out here. But Rick, tell me about you know David, you know Psalms 51 and how you know he uh, he experienced that. He had to get a he had to be have that new heart within him, and he said he was humble. And he said, God, create within me a clean heart and renew that right spirit. I need that clean filter. You know, when <clears throat> David found himself away from God and. Uh, my wife's positioning. <laughs> when uh, David found himself away from God in his heart, he began to immediately cry out to God and say, create within me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me, O Lord. And what he was saying is this, is I, you know, I, I can't live without God. I can live without being king. 
I can live without the throne, but I can't live without God. You know, we talk about, I know Debbie's been talking about filters, and David talked about thy word have I hid in my heart. And really that's our filter, isn't it? The word of God. And we have to let everything pass through the word before we get it, let it get into our spirit. And if, if the word throws up a roadblock, if the word is saying there's something wrong with this, then don't let it get in your spirit. Don't let it get in your heart. Just leave it where it's at. That's what his words develop for. And, you know, we can, you know, deceive ourselves if we're not careful and talk ourselves into thinking that something's okay and we know that it's not okay. And people say, well, you're trying to judge. No, I'm, I, I don't have to judge. He already has. He, he judged things according to his word. And that's why David's saying, thy word have I hid in my heart, you know. And when we put God's word in our heart and let everything pass through the word before it gets to us, I'm telling you, we'll feel a life filled with joy and we'll know that God is in control. He is, isn't he? Uh, my prayer for you today is that you just l allow his word to become your filter. I'll talk to you next. Oh, go ahead and pray with us. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pray. Here, come in here. Debbie's over here by the side. Smile. Okay. <laughs> All right. Everybody is here. Thank Let's you. pray together. Father, we thank you. We honor you, God, and we thank you so much for loving us in a way, God, that yes, no one else ever has. You love us more than we even love ourselves, and you're determined to keep things away from us that would end up doing us harm. You want to filter those things from our lives. I pray today, God, for everyone listening, God, that you'll just allow their hearts yes. to open to you and close to those things that try and destroy. We give you the honor and praise for this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Listen, God loves you today. We love you. And have a great rest, rest of, of your day. day. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> well, well, that's what happens.